Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. In this episode I am still trying to rendezvous the supply vessel with the large Mars transfer vehicle number 2. And this has been an arduous process. In fact, I started these burns like last week uh, after recording the first one. I was intending to do uh, two episodes last week, but it turned out that this was so painful that I couldn't get through it. <laughs> um, the, it's, it's the ion engine burns, trying to, uh, especially since a lot of the burns are in, around periapsis in order to manage things, and there's not a whole lot of time at periapsis, you know, it swings by that pretty quickly and then takes a long time out here. Uh, any periapsis burn with an ion engine, you can only do a little bit at a time, so... Anyway, this time I'm actually boosting the orbit up. You can see the dotted line. So I'm sort of going in reverse of what I wanted to do. But yeah, that's uh, we've got an um, encounter here that has a relative speed of 125 meters per second. I decided I would take it. Uh, it, was just, it was just taking too long. And fine, I'll accept boosting the orbit up there instead of... I wanted to bring both of them down to like Deimos or Phobos level, but forget it, <laughs> it takes too long. So here we're approaching the node, so I'm going to have to shut down the ion engines and actually use the the methane engines. And I'll do that, I think, right here. Okay, so methane. Of course, the whole goal was to avoid using the methane engines, but... There's a little leeway for that at this point since we have an encounter plotted. Well, that's a closest approach distance of 8-ish kilometers. That's pretty good. But, you know, at least this is sort of the, sort of a slower part of the orbit. Not at apoapsis, but still, uh, we'll have some time, I guess. Okay, let's go over there and see if we can get these two together. I mean, I feel like having demonstrated the potential efficacy of ion engines, I'm gonna try my best to get away from ion engines as quickly as possible. <laughs> so, I mean, NASA can do this. I mean, it's, it's totally possible, you know, um, totally possible, but I've, I've had enough pain and suffering, thank you. I think, I think I might be switching over to I mean probably maybe the supply vessels can be sent on ion engines but uh, I want my Kerbals to be on like a nuclear vessel okay we're all visible here in render range okay let's see about this side stabilizing itself and maybe turning a port towards us it's a shame not to be able to dock these two end on end, but we've got the capsule here, the Lynx, taking up that slot. We've done some time warping, so we'll get in a crew report. 20% uh, stress, 7% radiation. I don't even know if these two can dock. There might just be too much residual wiggle or inertia all right well obviously this sort of thing is dangerous and nerve-wracking um, so hopefully we won't get this wrong or lined up as far as roll is concerned at least of course with the location of the RCS thrusters it's not perfect control for docking here Okay, closing closer. We are now within 200 meters. I'm reasonably sure that that closest approach distance must be wrong at this point. Um, I guess as usual, the closest approach distance is to the center of the thing. Instead of what I'm actually targeting. I mean, the distance to target is interesting too, because that seems closer than what this is indicating, but maybe this indication is from our center? I don't know. These numbers. 
I think this distance to target is correct for this docking port to that docking port, but then why does the closest approach distance have to be wrong? We are under 0.1 meters per second. Which means I don't see the prograde marker anymore, which is a little bit irritating. And do we, will we have connection? We do. Well, doesn't get smoother than that, I suppose. 295 tons in orbit around Mars. Uh, let's take off the RCS before it starts doing weird things. And yep, now I'll have to sort out where, what I want where, because you know, how much fuel do we want out of this supply vessel? I think I wanna just take all that xenon gas. We'll leave it with half of its xenon gas then. And as far as it's methane and oxygen, it'll need some left over though. Otherwise it can't maneuver it. Well, it has the reaction wheels, but it won't be good. Okay, now the question, how much food, water, and oxygen do we want to transfer over? Because we probably don't want all of it. That's just extra mass that we don't need. Mm. I'm gonna pipe over some nitrogen just for the heck of it. We've got a lot there. And maybe the lithium hydroxide. We haven't used a whole lot, it seems. The only question is whether you know, it's going to take longer than expected to get back or take longer than expected to get them off of the ship. All right. Well, I think that does it. Let's see. Well, let's get a good look at this. First time a contraption like this has been in orbit around Mars. I suppose we'll leave it together at periapsis so we can see it properly around Mars before undocking it. I mean, we're all in this high orbit, which isn't very scenic. Let's give it some time. Oh, Thalus Marineris and everything. Okay. It's, I don't know, the sun's a little bit too bright, but... Uh, here. Um, vanity shot. For a few seconds. Hopefully the sense of scale is very clear. All right, so there we have it. And now I will undock. Guess they didn't really spend much time with the extra room, but it wasn't really room, it's just... Okay, uh, let's just turn all that off. So now it's about 3,000 meters per second combined with the methane and oxygen and the uh, xenon, the supply vessel, I mean. And it's only 78 tons, which means that our Mars transfer vehicle is much heavier now. Okay, I'm actually going to use the ion engines to bring its orbit down, and we're going to see how well the ion... Ooh, it's rolling quite a lot. The ion engines accelerate it next to our other vessel. We're actually burning in this direction, and we're drifting away from it right now because of all the RCS burning. But yeah, all right, but we'll do that some other time. This isn't the important part. I want to go back to the main vessel. And what do we have as far as supplies? Well, it says two years and 167 days of food, six years of water, two years, 199 days of oxygen, plenty of nitrogen and lithium hydroxide. So, okay. And well, they didn't reduce their stress any to have extra supplies, but here we are. Okay, let me see what we can do next. I want to bring it down to a lower orbit, and I think we're going to have some sort of Phobos and Deimos landing, but let me see how to organize that. Okay, so I've been trying to get the MTV-2 to a lower orbit and succeeded, sort of, but things have gone rather wrong in terms of fuel consumption, and 
Well, as you can see, I decided to try and pass it through the atmosphere in order to bring its orbit down. And honestly, I should have done this earlier. <laughs> um, uh, it's fine at uh, 96 kilometers. It would have saved us a lot of fuel. I, I lost a lot of methane and oxygen just on turning and also trying to avoid getting this periapsis too low. Actually, this happened on accident, not deliberately. Uh, what happened was I accidentally left the ion engines on as we passed apoapsis, and of course that brought our orbit down. I thought I had turned them off over here, so uh, bringing the apoapsis down, I have them on on this side. But then I accidentally kept them on and passed over on that side, and that brought the orbit down. And then I had to burn radial in order to bring the orbit up, and I didn't have as much time on this side to save it, so I had to use some methane oxygen for that but yeah and I ended up at 96 kilometers and it's just been a whole mess but yeah I probably should have passed it through the atmosphere I know somebody had suggested that it's sort of doing a barbecue roll all on its own right now and we'll be out of the atmosphere soon uh, right now we've got an apoapsis below Deimos orbit which is fine I think uh, we'll hold it here so we'll Add apoapsis, boost the periapsis up again. I don't know if Mechjeb can plot a trip back home yet. We will see. But after this, I'll uh, sort of rendezvous the Phobos Superlander with this and try and do a Phobos landing. We'll see if the Phobos Superlander has enough fuel for that uh, on its own. Otherwise, we can use this lander for Phobos or Deimos as well or we can have a collaboration of some kind. I sort of want to move this fuel, I, I don't know, we don't have a whole lot of fuel over here. So, it may, may be the case that I don't want to reserve too much fuel for other activities. We still have a tug to use. It's in a high orbit right now over there. We also have a tug at the station. I believe and of course other stuff going on at the station we need to like boost the station up to us somehow because <laughs> that's the only way they're gonna get to the station um, we'll see about that somewhere around in this mess is a station I swear this is not the rotation this was supposed to do for artificial gravity but I guess it's okay for thermal purposes Okay, we've lifted it up to a safe orbit, nearly 12 hour orbit here. And we're gonna need to figure out what to uh, get over here so that we can make a Phobos landing. So let me take a look at our station briefly and then also Phobos lander, uh, I think just Phobos super lander. There might be more than one of them, I don't know. Uh, it's a, quite a mess. Well, looking at the station such as it is, it's barely possible to get this to rendezvous with the Mars transfer vehicle and the reason we would want to do that is to give the Kerbals a little bit more living space. Um, so it'll take 680 on the initial burn down here and then another 300 in order to uh, complete the rendezvous, uh, solve that relative speed there, which means, you know, we're talking about 30 meter per second margin or something like that. So that's not great, let's face it. That's probably uh, not doable as it is. Though if we lift up the orbit of MTV2, uh, get its periapsis a little bit higher here, and get it up to like this level, that will help this out, I think. And also if we could have MTV2 do an inclination change, that might be positive as well. But I think this rendezvous right now is too much. So we'll have to see. Anyway, um, yep. So, but it's theoretically possible and we could do something with it. But this is not the first thing that we should do, I think. Well, at the risk of leaving some space junk, I think it's clear we don't need this heat shield anymore. So off that goes. Okay, but uh, that doesn't help our delta V. It is 1,272, it looks like. And let me see how we can rendezvous with MTV2. It looks a fairly compatible orbit, not a whole lot of radial difference. 
Um, inclination is hugely different, though. Um, how different is this than Phobos? This is hugely different from Phobos, too. So we've got inclination problems. Let's, uh, would correcting with MTV2 help Phobos? Probably. So uh, that's pretty costly, though. And this cannot be refueled by MTV2 because it uses hydrogen and oxygen. And that's just rendezvousing with MTV2. This is the whole matter of actually getting to Phobos. Uh, so let's, let's not do it this way. Maybe what we want to do is have our lander on MTV2 handle rendezvousing with this. And so we'll use it as a go-around vehicle and even dock with this and push this around. This is fairly light, well, 14 tons. But then we can reserve this thing's fuel a little bit. Maybe even keep it around Phobos. But I'll have it uh, at least adjust its inclination with respect to Phobos. Okay, ignition. We do have limited ignitions with this. And it's a tiny, tiny engine too. Nine more ignitions. Be good enough for now. And why don't we extend the landing gear? Just so it looks more like a lander. Sort of. Not that for Phobos and Deimos you need a whole lot of that stuff. Okay, um, I want to take a look at the tug. Maybe the tug can... Uh, well, I really can't bring any Kerbals to this. And maybe you can tug this over to them. But, on the other hand, maybe I should reserve it for the station instead. The station needs more help, and having the extra living space for the next 400 days would be a good plan. Okay, yeah, let me... Let's uh, get Mars Tug 2 over to the station. No, I want to make sure that we have a Phobos or Deimos landing in this episode. So, okay, back to MTV2. I'm going to bring out the lander. Okay, so what I have done is lifted our periapsis up and corrected some of the relative inclination to the Phobos Super Lander. And I have also moved two Kerbals, Jedcast and Sigber, into the lander pod here and filled it up with uh, food, water, and oxygen. Well, not quite filled it up. I guess they've been consuming it while I've been doing some of the maneuvering. Let me put more in. Uh, no point not putting it in. We can always take it out later. With a 12-hour orbit, it shouldn't take too long to get these guys to the super lander. Well, let's go for it. Uh, Phobos lander 1 liquid oxygen tanks are empty. What's Phobos Lander 1? I don't even know what Phobos... Are you Phobos Lander 1? Well, your oxygen tanks are not empty, so... Um, let's unlock the fuels. Oh, refill this liquid. Oh, I guess this is Phobos Lander 1. I didn't realize that. Strange name for it, but I guess prescient. Alright, so... With this, let's take a look at our situation, Phobos Lander 1, 28 days of uh, water, 28 days of everything except for nitrogen's only 14 days. Hmm. Well, that's full up of nitrogen. I guess I didn't pack enough nitrogen. 14 days. We'll have to review that later and a little bit short on the lithium hydroxide too. Okay. Um, power obviously is necessary. We do have solar panels and everything. Okay, so with this lander, it'll take a uh, first burn of 334 meters per second and another one of 449 to rendezvous with the Phobos super lander, so that's 800. We've got 3,708, so let's go for it. Fortunately, Phobos has a fairly quick orbit, so the fact that we only have uh, 14 days of nitrogen shouldn't be too bad. wonder why it shows a red part down here when it clearly understands, well, this doesn't understand that we have 3,000 meters per second. That's only 235 for some reason. It's so strange, the stock calculation for Delta V. But presumably, hopefully they've fixed that in 1.8 or uh, something to do with real fuels. I don't know. 
This is not what you might call a good burn to do, but uh, it'll cut the amount of time it takes to rendezvous with the target. You can see we're mostly radial, there's some inclination, only a little bit retrograde, but um, yeah, it is what it is. Okay, eight kilometers it is, and relative speed is gonna be 443 as expected. Okay, going around. Now we do have a second Phobos Super Lander in orbit. I don't know, it's there, that one. And that one's in a sort of weird orbit. We'll save it, we'll try and go to Deimos with it, I think. Uh, I shouldn't have done it. Oops. Sell the fuel down. Now it's reading the full 3,308 meters per second. It's so weird sometimes. Okay, approaching to dock. This is the situation. The Hydrolox lander is visibly larger than the Methlox one, both because of the size of the tanks, but also because we've got the drilling unit and the ISRU stuff and all that business too. Got extra food, water, and oxygen. Not as much nitrogen here though. That's gonna be a problem. And dot. Okay, so nitrogen reserves are low. Yeah, that is a problem. Combined, how much nitrogen do we have here? Well, it says 28 days. Hmm. Lots of food, water, and oxygen now. Which is interesting. <laughs> Could have used more nitrogen, but the nitrogen depletes when there are no Kerbals on board. It was depleting the whole way to Mars and everything, so that's why. Okay, how much would it take? I'll just plot it while combined. Uh, to rendezvous with Phobos here. Okay, well that doesn't seem... Uh, there was an opportunity, I thought, right there. So let's see if we plot from this node and bring the orbit down. Is there a... There's a thing going on there. 47 and then... I can't tell what the relative velocity would be at that encounter. I mean, it seems like it'd be pretty high given we'd be approaching askance. Okay, well that's an orbit. 900. Well, okay, so... Let's say I shut this one down. Well, I don't want to do all 900 with, uh, but maybe, maybe this whole approach isn't the best. This is like a desperation approach right here. Okay, I think this will be a gentler sort of thing. Uh, 104, then uh, 450. And then we do 24 there. So that's much less than 900. We'll do this first burn together. All wrapped up and everything. So let's make sure we're controlling from here. And ignition. But after this burn, we'll uh, separate. We'll get the both of them over into this Lynx spacecraft. Well, maybe we'll keep Jetcast in here. I think that might be better. I mean, I guess it should be able to communicate. It's a mainly a communication thing. Yeah, we'll, we'll have both of them go to Phobos. But there might be a need for this to rescue them if well, in a lot of cases, actually. Mainly Delta V reasons, of course. The Phobos Superlander was meant to refuel at Phobos, but I don't know if that's going to happen in good enough time, right? Because it takes a long time to refuel. So we'll see. Well, while the burn is going on, I'm going to transfer the crew.
OK and transfer crew Jedcast. OK. Well, let's see if that's got enough Delta V undock. Uh, this side still has communication. That's good. It's got 2,237 left. These guys, let's see their life support situation. Lots of food, water, oxygen. 43 days of nitrogen, actually. Too much food, water, oxygen, and lithium hydroxide, to be honest, considering the nitrogen situation. Okay, does that look good enough? I think that looks good enough. So we're going to replot the other maneuver. Wait. Okay, close approach distance of 10 kilometers according to that. I'll believe it. Okay, Phobos should be approaching. There it is. Oh, and suddenly Phobos is very bright. Periapsis, 4 kilometers. That seems a bit close, doesn't it? I remember Phobos being lumpy and crashing into it when I was at four kilometers hence retro where's the yeah somewhere between retro and get me away from Phobos is where I want to be so now I think I can land just with RCS we'll see just using the RCS to the rest of the retro burn here okay this way I don't want to land in the dark though. And that bulge seems to not work for me. So let's well 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 not that much. Gotta be gentle plotting maneuvers for Phobos. Oh we do have a oh hold on. I didn't realize we had a scanner probe. See, I forget everything because it takes so long to do stuff. Um, not Mars, Phobos. Uh, that looks like nada. <laughs> oh wait, there's a little bit... Um, come on, there should have been more than that. I mean, how could it be a sharp line like this? Well, according to this, our current position is pretty close to a patch. Hmm... Okay, come to a dead stop, please. Oh, I, I, I thought I had settled it down. Now we don't, we're about down one ignition. Forget it, I'm not going to use it anymore. Until we need to rendezvous again. Um, we only have five ignitions now. Well, one thing I feel confident in is that I'm going to be able to make orbit around Phobos again. That much, I think, is safe. Can I zoom in on this map? Well, I'll close the map now. I mean, if we're not on track to get some ore like that, I don't know what's going to get us some ore. Well, we'll just land here, and if there's no ore, we'll hop somewhere else. Oh, I think we've landed. Is it? Well, that leg. Okay, downward thrusters, please plant us properly on this rather slopey slope. Start or drill. It has a negative number there, which means, yes, we are getting ore. Okay, uh, just RCS off now. Or is happening. Look at the electric charge draw, though. If we started the converter, which is tucked in in the middle of this. Um, hydrogen or oxygen first? Let's just do both. Oh, well, that's not too bad as far as... But that's because... All the ore went away immediately. Okay. I think the hydrogen 
is being boiled off faster than we can convert it. <laughs> but just the act of trying to turn this upright costs more hydrogen and oxygen than we can get from the ore, ore drilling. Okay, well, let's leave the SAS on, but yeah, I mean, the SAS is going to keep depleting the hydrolox. Okay, well, this is an interesting sort of situation, but we've landed. I don't know. I guess we can try and get a Kerbal out. I doubt the Kerbal needs a ladder, but let's see. Uh, I've got uh, sort of an invisible hatch here. I don't know whether the Kerbal will be able to get back in, to be honest. It's a dodgy business. All right. Uh, we'll have Jetcast do it. Well, it has board. That's a good sign. Uh, oh. Um, Jetcast? I don't know why Jetcast is like that. I've activated the RCS. Uh oh. Jetcast, why are you like that? No, Jetcast, please. Okay, he's got the jetpack armed, he's just not using it. Oh, there's no hydrazine! Oh, sorry Jetcast, you'll have to figure out how to walk. <laughs> and jump and everything. We'll have to wait until Jetcast bonks into the surface. The, ladders, uh, the lander is looking really weird with its drill going like that. Okay, good times. Um, take surface sample, why not? Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. Jedcast on Phobos. Jedcast has already popped up. Uh, I can't stay. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's true. Um, hmm, this is a little bit early for you to jump, Jedcast. Okay, um... This needs to plant itself back down again. I uh, will need something a lot heavier and more anchored to be able to do any sort of oil drilling here. Uh, or I keep seeing oil or drilling here. He's still floating down. Okay. Uh, don't climb. Oh, no, oh, you glitched again. Gosh darn it. Yeah, I totally forgot about hydrazine being necessary for EVAs because, of course, that's not... A realism overall thing, that's a Kerbalism thing. And really it ought to be nitrogen, because we packed that anyway. And that's what the MMU used. But anyway... I think we're just gonna go chase after Jedcast. This is gonna be touchy though. This is not gonna be easy to catch him. Because he's got no EVA propellant. This is actually like a gravity-like emergency here. Um, let's see. Make sure the ladder is sort of facing Jedcast. We need to dock the letter ladder to Jedcast somehow, basically. Okay. Can he walk gently enough to not... Okay, well... All right, he's floating again. This, the answer is no. He can't walk gently enough to. Um, can we sort of rotate the right way? Ah, uh, we're losing him. We're losing him. I don't know, Jedcast. Is there any way we can stop you from hopping 
violently. Oh no, you did it. Oh gosh darn it. Don't go that way. No, Jed Cass. As a ah, oh, what? No, I'm gonna alt F4. Come on, it was only two meters per second. That's not right. Okay, we have managed to save Jedcast from death by Phobos. And it's floating down. Um, no, uh, even the slightest tap I can't do without him floating off. Um, well, let me try once again to nudge this over to him. But we're using a lot of fuel. Actually, it's down a lot more than I remember it. But um, we're probably going to have to bring the other lander over. Okay. Um, come on, Jedcast. Oh no, no, come on. Well, I see you're having fun, Jedcass. This is not fun. This was supposed to be our moment of triumph. Uh, Jed Cass, come on. <sighs> okay, grab. Uh, please let the ladder work. <laughs> Uh, okay, come on, board, oh, okay, we've got jet gas, folks, we've got jet gas, let's get off of this rock, man, oh man. I know, I know, no, leave no Kerbal behind, but still, that was an ordeal. Okay, I'm going to get it back into orbit around Phobos, and the next time we're going to have to figure out how to get them back to the MTV2. We will also need to finally bring MTV1 back home to Earth, which is what that node should be, I think. And then Deimos, maybe? But... Let's see if we can pack some hydrazine. There's no hydrazine containment on here, though. So I don't know if we can bring any hydrazine. That's complicated. Maybe if there is one on the other lander uh, uh, container. Or maybe they could take off a hydrazine container from MTV2 and place it on a lander. I don't know. That's another thing. Okay, we narrowly avoided disaster. Oh, I didn't want to use that engine. Oh, well. I just thought it might be thralled up. I should have had that shut down. Well, we'll be using it next anyway. All right, they are in a stable orbit around Phobos. And I'm going to turn the RCS off so it stops puffing. And with this, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.